Hey, yo, it's me, Pops Fan Marmalade, and you're watching the Comics Related Madness Network. Uh-huh. So come get some. Cromcon. Cromcon. Hey, we want to shout out to our sponsors, Daytona Beach Comic Con. If you are a fan of comic books, if you're a fan of comic book conventions, and if you like meeting comic book creators and getting comics and comic related stuff, then you need to make your plans to attend Daytona Beach Comic Con. This year's show is September 7th and 8th. Silverline will be there, so you should make your plans to be there too. We'll see you there. If you like comics and find yourself in the Orlando, Florida area, I mean, doesn't everyone come to Orlando at some point in time to see the House of Mouse? But when you're here, you need to make it a point to visit Coliseum of Comics, especially the one on East Colonial Drive. They carry Silverline Comics, even a limited edition Coliseum of Comics version of our comics. So, when you go, be sure to ask for Silverline Comics and tell them we sent you. OCD stands for Orlando Collector Deviants. OCD, Stephen Trish. They're a family of geeks who promote geek things, particularly those around the Orlando, Florida area. They're big supporters of Silverline, and we think you should be supporters of theirs, too. Go give them some love. If you are an independent comic book maker and you need to get your independent comics made, you need to look no further than Kablam! Kablam Digital Printing. They print our books, and they do a bang-up job. They're not only trusted by Silverline, but many, many independent comic book makers. Head on over to Kablam.com and see for yourself just how easy it is to have your comic printed by them. And tell them Silverline sent you. Hi, this is Tim TK, host of That Silverline Show on Tuesday. Join us at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific, every Tuesday night as we discuss pop culture and the joys of making comics. Hi, I'm Barb Kelber, co-host of Silverline's Wednesday Wham. Join us each Wednesday night as we discuss comics, literature, movies, and anything else that may catch our attention. I'm Roland Mann, and I host Silverline's Silver Sunday. Join me every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern as we make mine Silverline. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Silver Line Silver Sunday. It is Sunday, February the 19th, 2023, the year of our Lord. How's everyone doing? Well, I'm alive. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I, th I think that was too much for Tommy and uh, Curtis last time. Eh? <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's go around and get some voices for those who, uh, who might be listening later to the podcast. Haley, say hi to everybody. We got Haley Martin. Hello. Oh, I found it. <laughs> uh, and we've got joining us uh, Peter Clinton, who is just a penciler. So he says, Pete, say hi to everybody. Oh, yeah, I've just found my pencil. That's what I've been looking for. <laughs> and, and since you're just a penciler, you need that. Uh, I've, and, got, and, I've got the razor, too. Or uh, rubber. There you go. Rubber. Are you wearing a Marvel uh, hat today? Yeah, I've got a Hulk hat on. Okay. All right. I just saw the Marvel thing. You, you wear <laughs> that just because Jerry's here, huh? And and he he drew sure. Batman. It's nothing to do with that. That's the hat I found. Yeah, I drew I drew Hulk once or twice. Yeah. <laughs> and we have the legendary Mister Jerry Bingham joining us again tonight. What's up, Jerry? Legend in my own mind. Thank you. <laughs> well, you said it, not me. He's so. still looking for pencils. We got to get this guy a pencil rack or something. I got uh, <laughs> I got I got two pencils. I found them. <laughs> That's what ears are for, you know. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Although his are holding up his glasses, so. Yeah. Well, wait. What what happened to your electric? Don't you have a? You've got an electric eraser, don't you? Yeah. Okay. I dropped it. I can't remember. I can't find it. <laughs> that's, that you know. I, that's what happens when you have babies. No, what happened was I dropped it, and I thought, okay, it's there. That's fine. I I'll pick that up in a minute. And then something happened, and I don't know where it's gone. In England, you're allowed to give pencils to babies. What? What did Roland say? <laughs> she does like to grab my Apple pencil. She does. Uh, Tommy may may uh, join us uh, a, a little bit later. He he is uh, he forgot. He sent me a message today, and he goes, "Hey man, I may or may not be able to be there because I forgot. Uh, Renee's got me busy. Renee's his wife We're going to Epcot. So and look who else is joining us tonight. What's Roberta, up, Roberta? Hi. Hello, Roberta. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Let's see good to see okay. you. Let's put Jerry right good. in the middle. Mm -hmm. So, I here we are. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, uh, let me try to see if I can 
fix this Sunday, lower right. There we go. Uh, all right, so shout out to our sponsors, Daytona Beach Comic Con. Uh, if you uh, <clears throat> like comic conventions and you like comics, Daytona Beach Comic Con is the place to be. September, make your plan. Silverline will be there. We hope to see you there. Uh, if you are in the Orlando area and you like comic books, you should visit Coliseum of Comics because they carry Silverline comics. And you can find them there with mm. the, the Coliseum of Comics logo. Those are unique to the stores. You can only get those comics with their with the Coliseum of Comics logo at Coliseum of Comics. Um, we encourage you to go there and get your comics. Um, shout out to Kablam. I don't have a comic book handy. Kablam is, uh, here we go. Kablam! Uh, because they are digital printers and they are comic specialty printers. If you are an independent creator and you need your comic printed, check out this sweet, uh, sweet foil cover. Uh, you seen I haven't received one? one yet. No, because I haven't either. They're not, they've not been printed yet. This is oh, just they're, my, they're slow. <laughs> this is, I think they're supposed to get to them. I don't know if it's next week or week after. Right. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, Kablam Digital Printing. And let's see. Uh oh, I lost so that, that, op that opening screen roll in that we that we saw with the heard the music too. Uh huh. I, I didn't know where I was because it was said everything except Silverline on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I gotta say something to him. I gotta. I, I, I noticed that uh, the the he sent me the because you know because we joined the network now so we have uh, we have a broader reach and so he sends me he sends me the videos to play to for the sponsors and I'm like wait where's Silverline on here we need to be on there so I gotta say something to him pops <laughs> yeah. if you're listening uh, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, 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 there you go. Uh, Jay Lee says, Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Jay. Uh, if you got questions for Jerry, time to ask, ask him. Um, so Jerry, last time you were here, we we quizzed you all about uh, your background, um, your, your time in the industry, and everything. Tonight, I want to talk to you about uh, your thoughts on, on comic storytelling, and we can talk about uh, writing and arting. Um, but I want to talk about kind of what you, what your thoughts on stories, what make good stories and what some of the weaknesses you see. Obviously we don't want to, we don't want to call out any names, but, uh, you know, what are some of the, as I, as I recall, as I recall last time you said you quizzed me, you didn't quiz me about anything because I just think I just rambled on for two hours until you <laughs> shut me off. Well, so, so, so what we did, so here's what, here's what we're good at, Jerry. We lobbed you softballs, yeah. right? Yeah. And you, just, you, you, you knocked them out of the park, right? Yeah. So uh, maybe we'll, maybe we'll do that again tonight. We'll, we'll lob you some softballs. So I promise um, I'll keep it in the park. I'll just hit grounders all night. <laughs> well so so we just know not to ask you yes and no questions that's the that's the point right? <laughs> yep. Jerry, do you like this yes next question uh -huh. um so so pete I'll, I'll give you the the floor first as a penciler do you, you have anything that uh you want to ask jerry about the comic storytelling penciling um something yeah, i don't what am i doing wrong what are you doing wrong what am i doing wrong where do i go wrong where, where what's the most common uh, mistake you probably see. If, 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 I'm assuming people that. come up oh. to you and say, oh, you look at my stuff. That's, that's right? good. What, Great you know, what, what's the most common thing you see that's going to do, they're doing wrong? What do you think people are doing wrong? Uh, what do I think pencilers are doing wrong in general or comics what, are doing what's, wrong what's in the general? What's the most common thing you yeah. think pencilers are doing wrong? I, I, I assume people come up to you and, and ask you, will you look at my portfolio? Right? Will you look at my stuff? Uh, will you give me advice? What What's the most common thing you you probably see from doing that? that you think? Well, I remember back in the day. You know, it's been a long time. I just started going to conventions again. But back in the day, <clears throat> I recall going to the same conventions year after year and seeing the same people come up to me with their same portfolio I looked at the year before and the year before <laughs> that and the year before that. The exact same art, right? The same art, the same exact same drawings. He's just and and there were some, several people notorious for that. And after a while, you just get tired of giving them the same advice. And, uh, you know, so the for beginning artists, not you guys here, but for be beginning beginning artists, I'm, I have to say that you have to be flexible enough to yes, make your way forward and uh, <clears throat> stop, stop playing in the same mud pile and, you know, try a lake once in a while or a stream or something. You know. But uh, 
Yeah, that, that's the, the biggest problem I see is people not growing from year mm-hmm. after year, especially young young people, the late teens, these people college age or thereabouts. They they have they think they've done it right, and they can't see the fault in their work, and they just get they stagnate. Or they, or they don't they don't even, they don't even stagnate. They don't push themselves. Um, I don't I don't know how better to put it. Uh, well, stretch, stretching beyond what you're comfortable with, you know. Well, let me let me ask you a question. As as someone who doesn't art. Um, when you say um, they're, they're not pushing themselves, what would um, what would you tell or suggest an artist do to push themselves? What does that What does that mean visually? It means Does once it you do, mean- once you once you think you finish a drawing, put it away and start another one. And and actually, working fast is the most advancement I ever made as, a, as an illustrator was when I started to get work and I was forced to churn out drawing mm-hmm. after drawing, page after page. And even though, you know, you're looking back, you think that stuff is inferior. Um, as, I, as, I re, as I said often last time I was on here, <clears throat> it's, you, you, have to, you have to put a drawing down, walk away, pick up another, another drawing, you know, start another drawing and, pick up books you have to you know 100 i can't tell you how many influences i had yeah. growing up and my mother my mother i think i was maybe 12 when she bought me the john maggie learn to draw set and then mm-hmm. after that i was you know buying comic books and trying to draw from every all the different art styles that i was seeing coming out of marvel and um, but never even when i you know i went off to art school and, and i was for a year, a whole year in art school, American Academy of Art, downtown Chicago, where I goofed off most of the time and didn't <laughs> much, much. <clears throat> but it was my first time away from the house, you know, so. Yeah. Um, I remember going into, <laughs> I'd go in, they'd have the life drawing classes with in, in, in the academy there. And basically I would cut out of, it was the afternoon class. So I would cut out of the afternoon life drawing class with, a buddy of mine, and we used to walk across the park there, downtown Chicago. Walk over to the Field Museum, and I'd be drawing the wildlife, the stuffed wildlife, in the, in the behind the glass. And <laughs> I just I got bored with doing whatever they wanted me to do in the art yeah. school. But but I think all of that fed my versatility. Mm-hmm. You know that I wasn't just doing the same thing all the time. Yeah. And I I, I kept I kept purposely finding inspiration in different places. And I think that's a, that's a big thing a lot of artists miss these days. Um, you know, when you draw comic books, you know, everybody wants to draw the superheroes and, and that's all I ever wanted to do when I was growing up. And even, you know, when I was in the military, that's what I patterned my life after. But you realize once you have to do it for a living and you're following someone else's story or whatever, you have to know how to draw cars and buildings and lamp posts and fire you know, you just you're not just drawing you know big fists crashing into faces you know? yeah yeah so as we so often like yeah yeah we do like to see those so i, I know and, and it sounds like if if i'm kind of hearing you correctly because one of the things uh one of the things i see with, with writers a lot of time is that they write something and um uh, and they revise it and 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 revise it. And 10 years later, they're revising the same thing. And, 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 and there's not, there's really nothing wrong with revision. I mean, I no I'm no, 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 that's not revise yeah. guys over and over too, but no. you have to, like I said, you have yeah, to, that's get not what I'm saying. Past, yeah. You have to get past these things. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think, I think my thing was that, that that's all they do. They don't, right. they don't do anything new beyond having done that. They, they have the one thing that they do and then they just spend all of their time on that revising. So you talk to someone and at a writer's conference and then, you know, three years later, they're, they're on, you know, the, the 15th draft of the same novel, but they haven't written anything new. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and and yeah, there, no, I think I think revision is necessary. Uh, so so don't mishear me saying that I don't think you should revise. I, I think. And I'm not I'm not trying to contradict you. I, I understand I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I, I just think uh, what I see in writing, I, I just see is, is like they don't ever produce anything 
new, they take the one thing. And so are you kind of saying that that's, this is kind of a problem with, with artists as well, that they, they, they spend too much time on the one thing and, and, and they ought to work to get faster? Well, mostly, mostly it's the young artists and, and they'll, <clears throat> they have their favorite thing. They like to draw. And, you know, I won't, I won't name names, like I said, like you said, but yeah. I, you know, there were some professional artists that I saw early in their career where <clears throat> they couldn't draw feet and all their hands were ball, all their hands were balled into fists. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's like, you, you know, you have to learn the construction of the hand, yeah. <laughs> you know, you have to be able to draw expression changing. And actually it was, I think I heard, you know, I heard everything second or third hand, but I think it was Joe Kubert said that the hand is almost more important than the face. The yeah. hand shows just as much expression as the face most of the time. Yeah. And, and, and so these are, th these things are important. And yeah. a lot of people, a lot of people ignore this stuff for the, you know, for the wide eyed close up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, that, that, that's my, that's the biggest problem with young people starting out is they don't, they, they don't evolve fast enough. Yeah. And, and it's their own fault. I mean, they, they have to push themselves in different directions. Mm, yeah. Um, I always I always had many influences. I, while I was drawing comic books, I was I was being wowed by Frank Frazetta paperback covers and trying to, to learn how to paint. You know, yeah. you know, it's all it's all that stuff combined that, you know, even though I wasn't much of a painter back then, that brought something to my line drawing. Yeah. The, the, sh the shadow and the, you know, half tones and. Do you, well now, so so what you so what you do a lot today is you like do a lot of the the Western style painting, um, and of course I've ca I've called you Frederick Rem Remington before, uh, which you know not a lot of people know who that is. <laughs> you yeah. do, I know, um, and I'm not going to dispute you because I know he would bow down to me if he got if he had the chance today. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> what, a, what a piker he was. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. but uh, so, but my question is. So were you influenced by that kind of work back then, or is this is something new that, that, that has come in your, your timeline as an artist? Well, I actually, gosh, you know, my mom, I keep bringing up my mom. Mm. She was the greatest driving force in my life as far as becoming an artist and a writer and in music and, the, and all the arts and she always kind of, you know, she's the one that I wasn't much of a reader in school. I was reading comic books and that was it. And she's the one that came in and she, she threw the, <clears throat> her Howard Brown copy of Dracula onto the bed and said, you have to read this. <laughs> and, I, and I read it. And then she handed me her collection of uh, Arthur Conan Doyle. Wow. And I carried it around a lot, I picked a story here and there, but then I became a, a Doyle fanatic and I just, I, Sherlock Holmes was my guy for many years and yeah. you know, the, the movies, the books, everything. And so she, she knew how to tweak the right notes in me. Mm. Um, like I said, she bought me, the, she bought me the John Nagy learn to draw set when she saw that I was trying to copy pictures out of comic books. And then, you know, with the, with the actual reading thing and then the music that she always had music in the house. She was always buying, she would go to the movies with my, with my dad or a friend or something. And then, she would come home with the soundtrack album. Wow. And she, she would be playing it. And I would be looking at these cool album covers by artists like Howard Turpening and Frank McCarthy, the old, the old illustrators. But I would be looking at these cool album covers, trying to figure out how they made those album covers so cool while I'm listening to How the West Was Won and you know, plus all these other great, the, the great movies. So yeah. she just gave me all that and kind of nudged me. She didn't push. But she kind of nudged me when she saw I had an interest in anything. She would steer me one way or another and say, you know, go oh, check this out. And so I, that's when I, I, I can just, you know, go on tangents forever like I did last time. Or I can do this <laughs> <another> question. <laughs> well, well, Royal Airships has a question. He says, uh, what branch were you in? I was in the Air Force for four years. In the Air Force for four years. Uh, now, I was, there I is a in, and when I got out, uh, well, I, I did put a year at the American American Academy of Art downtown Chicago, and I worked that whole summer on a beer truck to pay for that tuition for the year, and I just I couldn't imagine going back to work for another summer on a beer truck in Chicago, and so I, I joined the military. Well, 
I had a very low draft number. I, I don't even remember what it was, but it was Vietnam was going on, and I didn't. I couldn't. Also, couldn't imagine sitting in a in a ditch with a bunch of soldiers in Vietnam. So I joined joined the Air Force, and they made me a cop. And in Vietnam, cops sat in ditches over there. <laughs> <laughs> so fortunately, I didn't have to go to Vietnam. I was in. Yeah. I was actually in. Uh, I was in combat training and uh, the tech sergeant came by and he said, Nixon's bringing everybody home. You're not going. And I was like three weeks from going over. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of, I almost literally dodged a bullet there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I've told you before, you know, my, my uncle was a, uh, was an MP. Yeah. You know, I, I had two, two uncles serve in uh, Vietnam. One was an MP and the other was a medic. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I, I, was, the, I was a law enforcement specialist and yeah. the, fortunately I got to do that for most of my time there. Yeah. The four years. Yeah. Um, so, so here's a good question for you then, or, or, or Pete, did you have another one? Or I, I mean, I could ask questions all night long. You can ask your question. Uh, so, 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 you know, one of the things that then when we look at some of the, the, the artists that we tend to hold up, like even, even, you know, your generation artists, we tend to hold up the, the guys like, you know, uh, Simon and Kirby and, and these guys, they all, uh, many of them have war experience. Right. And so, they they had that war experience and bring that uh, bring that home and that kind of informed the artwork they did. Do you think that your time in, in the military uh, informed your art at all? And in, in, in what um, way? Is well, I, I I really can't say that it did much, except mm -hmm. that uh, <laughs> when I draw guns, I try you know I try to get the guns right and I try to try to do the hardware right. Although I, I have been known to get it wrong in the past, but I'm, I'm working too fast and not getting the reference. But uh, um, no, I can't say that the thing that, well, the only thing artistically I think that I really got out of the military was when I was off duty. I, uh, I spent all my time working on, I think I mentioned before, my 90 page comic book. That when I got out of the service, I took around to New York City and, right. and got turned down at every door. Now, that's Beowulf, right? <laughs> What's that? What was that, Beowulf? No, no, no. That was well, I was already working for a number of years when I did Beowulf. Okay, okay. This was this was a comic book that nobody wanted to look at because it was it was very crude. <laughs> In my mind, it was brilliant. I got ninety some pages. Everybody's got. But no. <laughs> yeah, right. Ninety <laughs> pages done. It has to be brilliant. Yeah, well, I drew on it for four friggin' years. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of uh, 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 Roberta or Haley, either yeah. one of y'all want to stream uh, art? Sure. Let's look at some art while uh, we're, we're talking here. Um, I've got, I just started laying out the base colors on the cover. Oh, yeah, and okay. Uh, wait, which cover? What cover? The, ooh. I haven't done much of them. Champion is Fury cover. Uh, oh, that out. Or is that not not right? Uh, well, um, I just yeah, opened it. Yeah, I think I think maybe not because okay. it has a character on the cover that's supposed to be a surprise. Oh, so yeah. let's not. Yeah. Obviously, we're not going to be able to promote the character without giving that away. But let's hold on to that just a little bit longer. That sounds good. <laughs> don't, don't tell Don't tell Peter you're doing half the issue as a. Uh, a guy in a shadowed room at night. Oh yeah! Wouldn't that be brilliant? <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Just turn in black pages. There you go. No, no, no. So, well, so this, so this we'll was Pete. Man. Yeah. <laughs> so this was so so. Uh, this is an email you I got are from correct. Pete last that would week, be too, right? Too much. So one of the uh, one of the commission requests for the Kickstarter was what's the Invisible Woman. Pete, Pete sent me a a, a blank piece of paper, and he goes, "Here it is." <laughs> done. <laughs> like, oh, Thank you for your money. Yeah, it's it's very paint and polar bear in a snowstorm. You know, you can't beat it. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of funny. Awesome. Like, that is like, really funny. And, he, and, and of course, I think the uh, the request was that that, that she be in a, a specific costume. She has to be I, in her sexy outfit. Okay, yeah. And, uh, and 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 Pete's of course the brilliance is you can't tell which costume she has on, right? She's wearing her oh, sexy no. outfit for you. <laughs> so yeah, you know John Byrne did that with uh, in Alpha Flight, right? He did uh, Snowbird, the character Snowbird, in a in a blizzard, and it was just the all white issue. Um, 
Yeah, that's that's kind of funny. Uh, okay, so so I'll I'll share in a minute. Okay, all right, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Uh, Amy, good, has a question for you. Amy, uh, I was just on. Uh, I think it was recorded. I don't think it was live. Uh, or was it live? Amy, you tell me. I don't remember. Uh, with uh, the All Good Show with Amy and Doc, and I had a blast talking to them. Um, and I'm hoping that they will uh, invite me back because they ask me all kinds of fun comic book questions. She said, I'd like to ask the panel of a cool homage cover y'all would like to see. Uh, what about a vinyl record cover homage? Um, uh, she said it was live. Okay, well, excellent. Yeah, so thank you. I had a blast, Amy. Thank you so very much. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. So, uh, what so, uh, so homage covers. So, um, so here's I'm gonna, I'm gonna set you guys up. I know that fans often like homage covers. Um, we often will say, Hey, this is my favorite cover by George Perez. Can you, can you take it and put my characters, you know, on there and, and, and do the same cover as George Perez? Fans like that, right? As an artist, do you like that? Do you like doing that? Me? I saw Jerry uh, first. Yeah, Jerry, Jerry first. <laughs> no, well, it, in my mind, if I do an homage to something, it has to be a universally recognized something. I can do an homage to Norman Rockwell. I can do an homage to Frederick Remick, I Or I can do an homage to, well, I, I don't, I will. I wouldn't do homage to comic book artists just because I'm too close to it. But mm. uh, so you would not homage, say, a uh, 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 Fantastic Four number one. No, uh, and as people ask me all the time if I will do um, reproductions, and I won't do. Yeah, I won't do reproduction. I don't I, reproduction of my own work or anybody else. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, and that's I, you know homage covers. I understand because I'm, I'm still fan enough to to understand those. Yeah. Uh, I don't understand the reproductions. I, I don't quite get those. And well, I know for, for me, just being on the creative side, I don't ever like repeating myself. Yeah. I mean, even now, if I, if I do a painting tonight, I will purposely not make it look like a painting. No matter how successful I had in, had in the past, I will not do a painting to replicate that just because yeah. I have to create. I have to, you know, my mind has to be working along you know, story and art and all those other things. And just do just copying or doing something close to another work just it bores me, to be honest, yeah. as an artist. So what about you, Pete? Uh, homage covers. Well he look, so um what do do it's recreations <laughs> but with different characters. Right. Right. So in 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 in, in place of oh let me show you this. Can I share this? I don't know if I can show you this. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, my screen share doesn't work on this StreamYard nonsense. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, well, um, I'll, uh, uh, I can't even send it to you because it's still on my computer. Oh, this is annoying. Can I share? Can I share? I can't share. <laughs> you I need to share. talk to our tech wizard, Tommy, and get your uh, sharing fixed. <laughs> he can figure it out. No, I won't let me share. Would it? No. Anyway, so I do recreations. Of this I have one client in particular uh -huh. who, like, he's coming up with um, new All Star Squadron covers. Uh -huh. So he will take, um, he he will send me a, a cover, it's like an X Men number sixty or something, and so right. will you replace these characters with the All Star Squadron uh -huh. gotcha. characters? And he, yeah. he he's he's got loads and loads of these, and I think he's actually stuff starting to appear in. Um, is it alter ego? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, as um, as oh, this guy's continuing right. making covers, and this is what he's doing. He's got so many of them, but yeah. So I, they're not, I don't, they're not, they're not homage covers. They kind they're, of are, though, right? Yeah. Because 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 you're 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 replicating the original design, just using different characters. So it's, like, it's right? like I'm using the I'm using. A layout, so I'm using a Jack Kirby layout or right. whatever it might be, but replacing the character. I wish I could share yeah. these with you because they are quite cool. Yeah, yeah, and that's an homage cover. Yeah, and and, and I like those. I, 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 I you know, I, I get that. Like for you as the artist, you're like, okay, well, I'm not having to design it. And, well, and I don't, funny. I don't mind. 
I have no problem with anybody and other artists doing that. I mean, yeah. look how many people have re, re visited that first Jack Kirby Fantastic Four number one. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but it's just something that I have no, I have no interest in. You know, yeah. it's just, As an artist that you're, you're not interested in. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, I know, you know, Stephen Butler, uh, not last year, but I think the year, the year before last, you know, he did a, a bunch of homage covers for us. And when I asked him about it, you know, uh, I actually, uh, he told me when I was talking to him about, you know, doing some covers, he said, if they're homage covers, I'll do them for you. And, and, and you know, for this much money. And I said, so, so why, if they're homage covers, he goes, because I don't have to think. He said, the mm -hmm. homage cover, you're just telling me, draw what he drew, but put these characters in the place of it. He goes, I don't have to think. He goes, so the art is pretty quick for me. He goes, if you're wanting me to come up with a brand new cover, he goes, I, I got to think and design and, and try to, you know, make everything work. Yeah. He said, oh, yeah, Pete. Uh, no, that's Roberta. Sorry. I saw a pop so you're up. on Messenger. So you got one example there. I've got okay. Uh, let me uh, find one that's quite famous. Well, let me... Uh, Pull up here. You can't imagine how many people have asked me to drop panels from that Son of a Demon book. I mean, I, really? I, really? I have done quick on occasion something that looks similar, but you know, I understand why the fans want it. Yeah. But I just it it takes up valuable time out of my day. Right. <laughs> it's something I have to do quickly. You know, I don't. Know. Like I said, that's just me. Yeah. Yeah, uh, let me see here. Let me share screen, share screen, window. Where is it? Right here. All right, here's what Pete sent me. Oh, let me see if I can't scroll in here. So I have to do the, I have to do everything basically. I have to fully recreate it with the logo and everything. And even so okay. far as he has the nut, he has specific numbers he wants in the corner issue number. Uh huh. Um, and this is from, uh, you say, Fantastic Four number six. No, I'm trying to think what one oh. that was now. There's an, I sent you another one, which is a, it's a, I can remember. That's a, it's a Thunderbolts cover, actually. I remember that. Oh, Quite yeah, a recent, it was a recent issue. Well, say recent, it's a modern. Got the other one. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. I'm trying to get over there. There it is. And that yeah. was from a... Thunderbolt uh, from a Thunderbolts. Uh, yeah. Now, see, I, I, I would call that an homage cover because you, you, you're taking the original and you're homaging the image, but you're changing. It's changing the, the characters. Yeah, so. the characters. Yeah. Where yeah. I where a, re a recreation, and I've seen a lot of these. A recreation <laughs> is that you're just drawing the exact same. Yeah, thing. Exact thing. I'm not sure I would want to do a recreation of someone else's. Yeah. I've seen them where I've seen them where the inker is trying to copy line for line, stroke for stroke, uh, to try to replicate <clears throat> another work of art. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Amy said, "I'm an illustrator and I've been doing homage variants. And personally, though not super creative, I feel I have learned quite a bit doing them about comics. That is, which I am new to. Um, you know, I think doing something like that is a great way when you are new. It's a great way to learn." Uh, you no, know, of you course. Can... I mean, people go to the Louvre to, to copy, copy paintings hanging in the Louvre. You know, that's yeah. so yeah. great learning tool. Of course. Yeah, right? yeah, I, I, I think so. Um, all right, so Roberta and uh, Haley, do either of y'all have any questions for uh, you? Want to ask Jerry about maybe drawing, coloring, curmudgeoning? All of that. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> Sorry, I threw that one in there. <laughs> Thank you. But, You've been doing an awful lot of fine art for quite a while. Um, and I guess it, it gives you quite a bit of freedom of, you know, subject matter and, and what you want to draw. And, and I was wondering, are you branching out um, past what you've been putting out there lately with the um, Southwest art? Uh, I'm always in my mind. I'm always uh, What's testing next? other, I guess testing other directions. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, right now, I do the south. I do a, the Western art, a historical art. I say I call it historical art because I'm living in the East now, and so Southwest is kind of yeah. I, I like that genre, but I I also like um, I also like the 18th century New England, you know, and mm -hmm. I like you know. There's all kinds of stuff. All Arkansas over is not exactly the east. What's that? Arkansas is not exactly the east. 
Oh, Southie, it's okay, fine. <laughs> but, but I just spent Come 30 on, years. That's I just a little spent, bit insulting. I just spent over 30 years in California. This is East. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, it, it's absolutely East of California. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. East of California, yes. I'm going to have to Google it now because I don't know where any of that is. I know it can't <laughs> Yeah. It's not as far east as England. Yeah. Yeah. Our Arkansas yeah. is right about the middle. No, but, come on. But, but <laughs> Arkansas. Huh? Arkansas. Oh, Arkansas, yeah, yeah. It's, it's Arkansas, but yeah, it's just below Missouri. It says Arkansas on my phone. Yeah. Well, it's pronounced mm -hmm. Arkansas, so. It says southern U.S. <laughs> yes, it is in the south. But as Jerry says, it's east of California, which is. It's, 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 oh my gosh. <laughs> it's on the Mississippi River, deep. so that's pretty no, nice. no one other than Jerry would consider Arkansas to be east. That's funny. Arkansas, no, Arkansas is on the west side of the Mississippi River, even. Yeah, but <laughs> that was only considered <laughs> that was only considered part of the, the new world for a very short period of time. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's definitely east. Yeah. What? No, it's Speaking not. of someone who doesn't oh, know a great goodness. deal about the United States okay. geography, that's definitely on the east side. I know my geography, Roland. Come on. <laughs> it's it's southeast. Yes, it is. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll take southeast. Yeah, Jerry, you, you, uh, say, you say Florida is south or east? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I said or. You say Florida, Florida is Florida, south or east? Yeah, Florida is, is southeast, yes. It's as southeast as you can go in the U.S. Well, okay, well. <laughs> point, point me. But but I'm 16 hours from Arkansas. Yeah, up. You know, <laughs> it's not not east. 16 hours. <laughs> I have to drive west to Arkansas. Yeah, okay. All right. I'm not going to argue with geography with you. I know my I, I am down. Right. I am down down the uh, further. Uh, now I'm not from the. I'm not in the westest part of uh, florida i'm i'm way down in florida so I, i've take... lived in nine different states in my lifetime i kind of know my geography by now <laughs> yeah I've, I've lived in not quite that many but uh, a bunch of them. <laughs> amy says i would ask jerry his favorite traditional medium subject matter and style impressionist etc and how frequently everyone does traditional painting um well for me it's uh it's oils um it's that's the one. <laughs> There's a lot of a lot of pluses to working in oils. It's uh, one that uh, you can charge the highest prices for in a gallery, but it's oh. also but it's also in my mind the most most forgiving medium. You can always paint over something if you kind of get a brush stroke you don't like. You can sand it off when it dries. You can repaint over it, or you can just you know. So oils. To me, you know, and okay, yeah. And Roberta, and I, like, I like a bit of oil. I think, it, I think, it, mm -hmm. I think it blends smoother than right. Any I mean, other ones? There's, there's, there's a lot of things with oils that there's a lot of a lot of things with oils that um, be, beginning painters don't quite get as far as making sure you know how to blend the consistency of an oil, which which mediums to use with the oil paints in order to get that buttery paint to come up to come off your brush or knife you know and there's there's there are tricks to it but all in all it's probably the probably the easiest medium watercolors i love working in watercolors but it's unforgiving you mm. cannot mm -hmm. paint several washes of watercolor and have it look like anything halfway decent you got to know what you're putting down the colors you're putting down and you can tint it a little bit with um with wash overs but like i said it's it's an unforgiving medium um so as, as one who does an art, can you mix those two? And what are the pros and cons of doing that? Watercolor and oil? Yeah. Man, it's, it's not no, something big. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> one, one, one is transparent. One is, one is completely opaque. So Okay. <clears throat> yeah. You can do yeah, acrylic. it's kind of like a build-up versus a, um, you know, like you go from like blacks to, to white. Mm. Yeah. Or white to black. You know what I mean? If yeah. you have... If you have well, like it, a, a watercolor, it whatever you put down, it ruins the white. So you have to spare the white. Watercolor, you always have to go like the dark. Um, yeah. okay. Whereas in oils, it's best to put on your lights later because they say you're the the lighter pigment you use, the thicker it should go on. 
whereas your darker colors are put on thinner so that you can add your lights on top of it. So huh. it, there's, there's, you know, yeah, there, there are several, there are a lot of rules that come along with, with each, uh, with each medium, but you know, I, yeah. I break the rules all the time. So I don't, you know. yeah, but you have to know uh, what the rules are to break them. Right. Yeah. I also like pastels. I, I studied pastels with uh, one of the best pastel artists in the country, Harley Brown. And uh, <clears throat> I, I lived in Tucson for, a couple of years and mm. I got, I was able to get together with him and, and learn pastels. I took, I took his workshops, uh, Scottsdale art, art school, a couple of those and got to be kind of friends for a short time. And we would get together and uh, paint models over at the high school or the, the college gym or whatever it was. And, cool. But, but the yeah. pastels, I love pastels, but they're messy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, they're fun to work with, but, they, it, it's such a, the dust comes off of them so much that I was, I, I had done some uh, pastel work for just, to, you know, after I had spent all this time working with pastels, I, in order to impress one of the directors I was working on, I had a little bedroom and I did some of, some of my artwork in pastels and took them in. But I would wake up in the morning with colored dust in my nose from breathing <laughs> it's it it just kind of miserable I and mean, you just you can't vacuum it up because it just gets everywhere so when you sneeze blues and purples are coming <laughs> out right you know <laughs> it, it, it's not pretty but uh but it is but it is fun a fun medium to work in yeah now now uh Haley and uh roberta do y'all do any of the traditional stuff as well and if so what about you what are your favorites well, I started out doing acrylic as, I think, what moved me the most. Um, and it's a it's a little flat for some people. I think I just, I like the cleanness of it, and I like the build-up quality to it. And I, I liked that I could paint in a small space without yeah. air. <laughs> so the fumes yeah, weren't there. You in your bedroom. <laughs> yeah, so like it was very portable, you know. Um, but you know, I, I just I like the qualities of it, and I like that it pushed me to be fast because it was not forgiving on the level that acrylic starts drying, and you try yeah. to make a blend, and you better be quick about it. <laughs> Yeah, I liked I liked acrylics. One, I actually did, never painted acrylic in acrylics until I went to Disney. And because, of course, you can't work on anything that's going to stay wet for a while. And and I actually I watched one of the their artists in there working in acrylics, and I kind of learned from him. And I actually enjoyed enjoyed it quite a bit. But acrylics kind of dictates its own style because it's so mm -hmm. it dries so fast. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I I just got used to using flat brushes all the time, and making one or two passes and then just moving on. And, but uh, it's fun. Yeah. Here's, here's a great comment from uh, Royal Airships. And, and it, you're only in Florida do you understand this one. This is the more <laughs> north so you go in Florida, <laughs> isn't it right? The more yeah. north you go in Florida, the further south you are. There you go. Because <laughs> yeah, like Florida, I mean, you think of like Georgia, you're like, yeah, that's the south. But Florida is like. Not real, not as much the south, but it is actually more south. <laughs> like, well, it, well it, yeah, yeah. It's the further north you go in Florida, the more south it is, right? Yeah, yeah well, I, I was in, when I was in the military, I was in Florida for two years, and uh, yeah. <clears throat> a lot of guys I, I worked with and lived with in the barracks they were from Florida, but they didn't sound Floridian. <laughs> they, they, were, they, were, they were from the swamps. They were a lot of them were from the outback yeah. in Florida, whatever you call it. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Uh, Amy says, uh, "Yep, using oils and varnish, mm, they are buttery." Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then Royal said, "I did an acrylic of a ship at sea. It's the only painting I thought turned out reasonably well." well that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. What about you, Haley? A any traditional? Yeah, I'm like trying to think when was the last time I like painted anything. I mean, I did an uh an oil painting class in college. <laughs> so that was a while ago. And that was that's that's it's hard. Like, I mean, doing like still lifes and stuff and trying to uh mix the exact color <laughs> yeah. that you need, like 
I remember there was, yeah, we did this one pretty big still life. It was like two feet by three feet or so a bit. It was big. And um, it was just like a bunch of toys and stuff. And there was like this plastic, like, sh like beach shovel or something that was like this bright pink. And I, I could not figure out how to like make that color. <laughs> <laughs> it's like wow yeah when you're doing digitally you can just like eyedropper <laughs> yeah and then especially if you with a big painting like i wouldn't you know we worked on it for several class periods so i'd like you know put all my paint away and then next time have to like try to mix the same colors oh yeah i bet that's tough yeah but it was fun yeah, that was fun though but the I other think... problem is a dry looking color is so different in acrylic oh yeah yeah. Once it once it dries and you're like trying to remake it, it's totally a different shade. I can see that. Jerry, do you do you do anything digital at all? I used to. I don't anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll some you know I'll spend a lot of time assembling a painting digitally. Just I'll I'll take a, a dozen photographs and I'll crop and I'll I'll move them around the, the canvas image on my on my computer screen and. But I, I won't. There's no call for me to do anything, do any artwork digitally at this point. Mm -hmm. When I uh, well, when I was actually, I was at Digital Domain, and uh, <clears throat> that's when I was working in acrylics. I had just I left Disney and I went over there to work, and well, I could I could see around me other artists that would come in there and they'd start getting the work because they were doing all the painting digitally. So I actually I went about a work for a year because nobody wanted to hire a traditional painter mm. ah. and, and uh, in, in Hollywood, because it's, it's so easy for um, an art director or director to walk up behind an artist and say, you know, to a, to a, a red painting, say, no, I, I want it cool. I want a blue. And so, and they, and within the space of a half an hour, they can turn a red painting blue. If you're working in traditional paints, you can't do that. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, but I wound up being out of work for, almost a year. And that's when I decided a Cintiq was going to cost me 20, about $2,500 back then, a large Cintiq. And I said, yeah. what am I going to do? I'm not going to get work until I learn how to work on these things. Yeah. I couldn't work on a Wacom tablet um, because the, the hand eye disconnect. Uh, so I had to have something I could actually work on the screen. And then I taught myself painter because the brushes at the time were better than the Photoshop brushes. Mm. They were really actually, cool. I could actually ink something with the painter, but with the painter pen points and things like that. So, <clears throat> yeah. So I did have to teach myself digital. Yeah. <clears throat> well, with the mention of inks, then now let's let's uh, let's talk about inks. Now let's let's shift back to comics a little bit. Let's talk about inks. So, um, so and, and I'm, I know that you you've seen enough uh, digital stuff to know. You know, inking is changing a little bit in the industry as well because a lot of people are are you know, shifting to the digital. Um, what do you think, uh, let's just ask you the same question. Um, what do you think are some of the biggest issues? I think Pete asked a pencil question. What do you think are some of the biggest issues uh, that you see in today's inking that are, that um, they should improve upon? Again, no names, just, you know, in general, what do you, what are you seeing that, you know, oh, I see a lot of uh, today's inkers do this. Um, well, I ha I'm kind of, I don't, I don't want to say I don't like what most inkers are doing today, but I kind of want to say that because it's so, that's fine. It's so antithetical to my idea of it's all about the black and white artwork and coloring. You know, I've, I, you know, I painted my own work. I, I've colored my own work, but in my mind, I come from the traditional comics where it's about the black and white work. And at some point I had an editor actually tell me, he said, well, you don't have to fill in all these blacks because we're doing all this great digital coloring now to make the shadows and everything. And right. to me, when it, when the paint, when the, when the page left my desktop, it did not feel finished. Mm. Now, now, now you're talking I, about inks and not, and not pencils, right? Well, I'm talking. Yeah, I'm talking about inks. Yeah. The yeah. inks, you know, the the blacks aren't there, and when they are, they're not part of the design. They feel a, yeah. a lot of times the blacks feel like they're laid down to, you know, to make form or reflection or whatever, but it's not. They're not a part of the design of the entire drawing. Yeah. 
And I, I come from that era where <clears throat> I remember when I was first looking for work and I sat down with Marie Sever and the art director at Marvel and she's yeah. telling me what I'm doing wrong. And she pulls out the large Xerox of Ross Andrews Spider-Man page and she explained to me, you know, whatever you think of Ross Andrews work, she explained to me how Ross had a technique where he would sit down and he would design a page, design the page first, the entire page. He wouldn't mm -hmm. just draw panel to panel. He would design the page and sometimes in order to design it, he would start out by making a big Z or a big S on the, on the page that covers right. the whole page. And each panel, the way the panels lay out, you could see conforms to whatever that shape was. Hmm. Sometimes it was an X, sometimes it was a cross, sometimes it was whatever. But it, it gives something that your eye subconsciously sees yeah. as a full page design. And then you design each individual panel after that. But, you know, and so the blacks at the time, they were, part, they were all part of that design. Yeah. And, and I look at, I'm not, of course, like last time, I generalize a lot because I'm talking about the things that I don't care much about. Sure. You know, the, the type of art I don't much care about. Yeah. And to me, it has, there has to be some sort of design with the, it's a, it's a black and white medium first to me. Right. And so if the black and whites don't work, the colors don't, don't work for me. So. And, and, and Roberta and, and Haley, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean he doesn't like colorist. Oh, you just said it is totally irrelevant. You know, I come on here in order to. Leave. This is why this is the only reason for me to leave the house. Uh, no, um, you make me go to cry by the end of the night. You watch. So, but but I, you know, I'm I'm I am a little like you in that I I I, I mean I'm a I'm a I'm a huge fan of black and white artwork. Now, I, of course, I if I'm reading a comic book, I, I you know I like to see it in color, but. I'm a huge fan of looking at black and white artwork. And when I have an inked page that, that, that looks like a coloring book to me, that's a problem. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I want to see, I want to have the image. Of course, I'm a fan of words on the pages too, as if Amy's still listening, we talked about <laughs> in, in the last hour, but, but I, I, the art needs to, needs to make my eyes move. And I think blacks, Chunks and spots. I don't know. I don't know any other way to call them. Chunks and spots of blacks help move your eye on the page like that. Well, then that's and that's another thing that artists learn as they progress is it, it's sometimes it's the composition is more important than any individual drawing, mm -hmm. whether it's a composition of the page or composition of the panel yeah. or just you know how the figures are laid out in order to tell a story. It's a, the composition goes along with storytelling as far as in level of import, importance. Well, and let me ask you. Let me ask you this. Um, so, so because they're kind of, as I see them, as someone who doesn't draw, as I see them, they're, they're kind of two thoughts here, right? There's the, there's the actual. I'm going to draw this page, and have it tell a story, and I'm going to have is I'm going to draw this page and make it look pretty, right? In my mind, those are kind of two different things. Would you agree with that, or or, or no? Well, yeah, um, okay. I'm not about I'm not about drawing pretty pictures if it if it doesn't tell a story or if it doesn't move the eye the way you want it to move or whatever. Yeah, uh, pretty, do, you know, making something pretty for pretty for, for being pretty itself does nothing for me. Right. I and mean, okay. this is why I'm attracted to artists, like, you know, present day artists still working mm -hmm. like Lee Weeks. I think this guy's brilliant. Yeah. I mean, he took he took what was <laughs> what I was trying to do. I was tr looking at. I think he's evolved from the uh, Bicema like style and to push himself towards more and more towards modern work, but still keeping that uh, uh, storytelling as, and using blacks effectively and creating compositions on a page. And so uh, that's the kind of stuff I like to see. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, uh, color and, and colors are extremely important, Roberta. Yeah, but, Thank you. But, the colors, but great colors, great colors on bad bad line work don't oh, yeah. don't help much. Well, Robert, I, I was I was just teasing. Roberta already knows that I'm a huge fan of hers. I I I, I you're I love you're this. kind to me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we have another question here, Jerry. This was specifically for you. BJ Mann <laughs> says, "So Jerry, when are you going to visit us in Florida?" <laughs> oh, BJ, as soon as I can. <laughs> I actually, my sister's in Sarasota. I want to come down and visit her. 
And uh, but I'm I actually I put off my convention stuff for a while just because. Uh, well, I'm gonna Imagine. get maudlin again on you. <laughs> <laughs> and my cat, I, you know, last year I found out my cat's got cancer, and uh, um, he's, no. and so yeah. I'm giving him as much love and energy as I can for a while, not going anywhere until yeah. Yeah. he was. You know, I must be doing something right because he was supposed to be gone by Halloween, and he's still with me. He's so, you know, and he's doing okay. He, I can, he, I get him shots for. He's got arthritis on, on top of everything, osteoarthritis. Like I have. and so, he, so he, I take him once a month for his for his arthritis shots, and that kind of helps his other pains as well. I'm just when he when it gets too difficult for him, I realize you know, he, I don't want him to suffer. But yeah. right now, he doesn't seem to be suffering as long as he eats, and he's he can act like a real cat sometimes. Um. I got to give him the time. So. Yeah. Um, that's all to say, to answer BJ's question. Yes, I will come <laughs> visit you, but when I can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She tossed mm -hmm. in. She said, artists need a vacation too, my friend. <laughs> yeah. I'm perma I'm on permanent vacation. I'm, I'm that Aerosmith song. Yeah. <laughs> she said, bring your fur baby with you. <laughs> yeah, well, at, at, at his age and his condition, he's not pretty good at traveling. Right? No. Yeah. When uh, I, moved, I moved across country with this poor cat in my car, uh, and then I drove back to California with him in the car with me. And oh so, my goodness. You know, he doesn't love it. Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> he likes being settled someplace. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, Jackson here has said something that uh, I think that we can all agree with. He <laughs> says, Roberta rocks. Oh, that's <laughs> nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, so, so Tommy, so Tommy, who is not here, and so uh, we, I can't, I, he can't chime in on this. One of the things that he and I talk about uh, uh, about inking some, and uh, see if you got to have an opinion one way or the other on this, Jerry, is um, oh, I got opinions. Well, well <laughs> what I kind of feel that digital inking has done to to traditional inking is it, it's made the line. It, it has made I think a lot of artwork look more coloring booky. And I think uh, I think we don't see the variation of line weight. I, I, I see a. It seems to me a lot of today's inkers are afraid of a fat line, and I don't mean ph phat. I don't mean a cool hip fat line. I mean a big thick fat line. And it seems like they're afraid of them. And where you look at if you look at comics from you know the the sixties and seventies and and in the eighties, they weren't afraid to lay down a, a thick line. But I don't well, I, see a lot of that today. I, I think uh, I think a lot of that has to do with uh, all contemporary or most contemporary comic book art now. If it, it, even stuff that's in traditionally, a lot of thin, a lot of small thin lines used for shadowing, and, and the blacks are just are, are slapped in for you know to, to create solidity, I guess. But uh, that thin thick line that you're talking about, when I was trying to teach myself that Cintiq. It was a pressure sensitive pen, which is the reason, and the reason I liked working in painter because they had pen tips in paint in the painter program that you could use that pressure sensitivity from on the on the stylus and create that thick to thin line. But yeah. it, it's it's something that takes work to actually yeah. achieve, to to get practice at it, you know, to get to get good at it. So yeah. I think it's it's a matter of. <clears throat> Inkers nowadays, most of them just don't want to put in that kind of time to, you know, back, back, back when, I was, when I was starting out, you know, Dan Atkins is trying to teach me how to use the quill. You know, I couldn't get anything right. I was splattering ink on the page and I was, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> it took a long time to develop an ink style. Well, hmm. Yeah. 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 And a lot, a lot of times now, I, a lot of a lot of the problems I see with some anchors, not all, of course. Yeah. Um, but they don't quite get the the good traditional artists. I'm not even bringing myself into the picture, but the the best traditional artists that I've studied over the years, you know, the European artists or whatever, they knew how to. I don't know. I, I don't want to. I don't want to critique anybody. I said my yeah. thing. It's not my thing. <laughs> but, uh, well, they understood the value of either of learning how to form shapes just by virtue of the line weight. Mm -hmm. 
and the, the borderline around a figure, um, you will see it change shape going from dark from the shadow side to the light side, yeah. or, or or if there's a highlight on something, or and and, and then you'll see people. A lot of people, even back when I was learning. And I was getting it wrong a lot in the beginning, and I think it improved a little bit over time. But the cross hatching, cross hatching does not look like a basket weave. And cross hatching, <laughs> cross hatching, so actually, I don't know if it was Atkins or somebody told me, you don't use perpendicular lines for cross hatching. You use lines, to, your first set of lines go down to help create the form from dark to light. And then what you do for cross hatching is, that crosshatch line has to also be following form. It can't just be flattening out the image. Yeah. Unless, of course, you want a flat image. A lot of times, for instance, you have a window pane and you want to throw lines on there. You're not. You're not going to use curved lines because it'll make the window pane look curved. Right. Use flat. Use lines to make it look flat. And I would do that, say, for, with Iron Man. You know, if I'm not creating a curve. If I want to flatten something out, I will use lines to make it look flat. But there's there, I, there's a lot of, you know, I you know, I could go on with lessons here all night. Yeah. That's right. I just, I just think that we used to put different emphasis on getting those little details right as opposed to just a lot. I see a lot of inkers and it says nothing to do with anybody on the screen right now yeah. but, but you know i see a lot of inking in comics now it looks like they're trying to ink like other comic book artists as opposed to discovering the form mm. with, with your ink work yeah and what like dan, dan atkins you know he, i keep saying dan because he's the guy who basically the first guy that took me in and taught me yeah uh, what i was doing wrong and you know he would even though he was just, even though he built himself as an inker, he knew how to draw. And he would turn, he, I would be in the studio and he would turn over to the back of the page and he would draw a figure for me and he would show me why he put those lines down where they needed to go. And that's uh, it, a lot of, that's an art, I, that's an art that I think has been lost or ignored by a lot of people nowadays. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and, and for me, you know, one of the things that, of course, I, 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 I like to look at a lot of the the uh, '60s comics, I guess. And I, I, Jack Jack Kirby immediately comes to my mind. And I, I, to be honest with you, I don't know who who his inker was at the time. Um, well, he had a lot a lot of inkers. He's from Vinnie Coletta, which nobody liked. To, um, yeah, yeah. I don't know that he's the one I'm thinking of then. Um, but I, you know, I, I can just, I can see, I can conjure in my mind's eye several images, you know, where you, you've got Jack Kirby and these lines around these, this hand up here are so thick, you know, I mean, they're just so thick that you're, I mean, they're huge, thick lines. And then, and, you know, and then the, then the, the, the mid ground, you know, get, and then the background, they're tiny, skinny little line. And it just looking at the black and white, you're like, Oh, look, that's clearly there's so much depth in that there that those lines create. And I, just sure. don't know, yeah, sure. I just don't know that that we have very many inkers doing that today. Right, right. And a lot of it, you know, and I I know editors today who have said it to me and will say, and probably say it to their artists now that you know that's 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 old fashioned art. This is not what we're interested in seeing. This is you know. So sadly, yeah. that old fashioned art was right a lot of the time. <laughs> it's yeah. just been, it's yeah. been kicked to the curb, like you know. But um, yeah, that's the Kirby was a master in a lot of for a lot of reasons. Yeah. Um, but that that whole thing you're talking about, where when those lines thick to thin, I mean, that's his shorthand. That shorthand for foreshadowing. The short shorthand for light. The shorthand for a lot of things for a curve. It's, it's for a lot of things, and yeah. it just—it's one of those things that it, it was so automatic for him, you know, as the years went on, that it just seemed to roll off his pencil, and uh, but it was all based on knowledge. Yeah, yeah. And whatever, as rough as his breakdowns could be, they all came from a knowledge base. Yeah, and, and I, I think it worked. I think it worked so good to to build that that. Um, that depth in a in an image, you know. Um, well, it's, you know, it's like it's like action. Kirby, nobody did action like Kirby. 
Mm. His, his characters just flew off the page. Yes. And it, it had to do with the pose, even as extreme as the pose was, that these figures were in positions that a body could never get into. Right. But, but, mm -hmm. but it came, and the inking as well. Everything had a, had a purpose. It was, his, yeah. it was his way of, and he was so fast. I mean, what was he doing, like eight, eight pages a day or something at some point? I, I forget what they say. But, yeah. uh, it, you know, he developed all these techniques over time where he, you know, it was just, it would roll off his pencil. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, all right. So you guys got any other questions? Okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can ask a question. Okay. Yeah. Um, go ahead. So, so you do pe like penciling and inking. Do you prefer to do both or do you like it when do you like inking over someone else's pencils or vice versa? <laughs> Pen yeah. Well, rolling those I, like I, 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 I can answer that one. <laughs> well, I just, you know, when I was starting out, my art, my artwork was rather crude, and I got handed off to a lot of uh, a number of inkers who were not the most accomplished inkers. And so, one, once I started inking myself, the more I did it, the less I wanted anybody else to ink my work. Because it, no matter who the inker is or how good he is, um, Tom Palmer, you know, the best one of the best inkers yeah. in the business, if not the best, actually inked one of my stories, and and it was just a thrill to see him inking my story. Although, you know, when I looked at it, I'm I'm thinking, yeah, but I didn't draw it like this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, he he probably improved on it quite a bit. But, yeah. but when it was, you know, <laughs> but that's why I, I would I started just inking myself as much as possible. And after a while, I didn't even want anybody else to ink my work. Although I did go off and ink a couple other artists on quick jobs. It, it was for the basically for the work or just because like I inked a Spider-Man Annual by Salvia Sema. Oh, and wow. Just because, just because I grew up with Salvia Sema, it was a joy just to work on, you know, those quirky characters that he drew. Yeah. He drew. So, yeah. He drew, so um, yeah, but for the most part, yeah. <laughs> I like I to do it. And, well, I'm pretty, I've been out of comic books for quite a while now, so. <laughs> <clears throat> I, I can't really critique anybody now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, other questions? Pete, you got any other questions? Um, have you seen my French curve? <laughs> I, I can't seem to locate it. I know my mind, but I don't think it fits through the... <laughs> I'm trying to draw a car, and I haven't got a French curve, and it's rather tricky. It's probably next to your electric eraser. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, I actually have two French curves. Um, it used to be one French curve, and then I asked my wife, "Could you pass me my French curve, please?" And as she did that, she just turned to snap it in half. So now I have two French curves, oh. both of which are missing. <laughs> Pete, you're frozen here. Let me, uh, let oh, me see. Sorry. Eventually, you learn to get more than one of everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, your image. Yeah. I can hear you just fine, Pete, but your image is frozen. Oh. Huh. That's probably my internet, I'm afraid. Yeah. I will, um, um, can we log out and try to log back in again? Okay. All right. All right. Let's see if the uh, computer won't work at all. So, <laughs> so if you guys ha no, don't have any other questions, I, I I'll ask the next one. So going once, going twice. All right, Jerry. Let's move on to let's move on to story now. All right. So mm. I, one of the things I know about you uh, is I know that you you also do a, a lot of writing. Um, Again, we, we, we don't, we don't, you know, we don't like to talk, you know, negative names here. But mm -hmm. if you're looking at comics of today, which I haven't you, looked at too many of them lately. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, so the most recent comics that you can remember, um, what would you say has is or has been um, the biggest issue in in the stories that you see? Uh, and if you were to if you were to give like kind of one sort of blanket statement to all the comic book writers today, what would that be? What would you say? Oh god! <laughs> what? I said, oh god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, well, you know there are there are some excellent writers, and there yes, are there are yep. But there are a lot of and there are a lot of writers who are not so excellent. Um, <laughs> and the, the, well, 
because I, I've seen the evolution of comics. Yes. And and, um, and I don't believe the evolution has improved that much on comics. I, I had problems back in the in the '90s when I when I was you know finishing up my <laughs> tour of duty um, yeah. with, with the way comics were evolving and. I think I think a lot a lot of it started changing quite a while ago, when all of a sudden a comic a comic book was not self-contained, mm. and anybody could drag a story out for as many issues as they could convince an editor they could go to, and a lot of problems I see, where I can see problems with an artist's storytelling ability, I think a lot of writers nowadays do not have that ability to create pages with individual impact as well mm -hmm. as cohesive, an entire book that sits alone. Even though it may be a continuing story, you have to, I, in my mind, you have to wrap something up by the end of the, the end of a comic book, yeah. a, a physical comic book. And it doesn't have to wrap up the whole story, but, at, but wrap up a character line, wrap up, uh, a confrontation line or something so that people do not have to buy six or seven comic books just to finish a story. Right. You know, that That's to me. And, and this started, like I said, it started back in the, the late eighties, early nineties when they, nothing was, you know, you almost, you almost never saw an individual story in a comic book. Yeah. Well, I, I remember even in the late seventies, probably a lot of the, uh, a lot of the uh, Englehart Avengers, yeah, were multiple multiple part stories. Yeah, and and you know I, like you said, you're one of the few people who knows I've I've been I've done any writing. What in actual fact, I started studying writing in high school, and I I wrote I've written almost as much as I've drawn over the years, hmm. even though I haven't published very much. I think I published my first short story back in the mid nineties. Um, but, <clears throat> I, and I, I've, you know, I've worked at novels. I've got a whole hard drive full of, you know, folders with, full, with the finished <laughs> novels. That probably never go anywhere. But in, to me, you know, if I see a problem with some of my work, I'll move on like I do with my artwork. Yeah. And try to try to improve and, and carry my the craft forward, yeah. but I almost, I was almost exclusively just I wanted to write a novel. So I spent decades writing novels, and that went nowhere. And I tried <laughs> my hand at screenplays. I tried my hand at everything. But when I when I actually sat down and consciously decided to write short stories, I learned how to use time. I learned how to use a, a fast story arc how to, and how to actually, even if I have a series of short stories and they're connected by the character or whatever, I know that I have X amount of words that I am limited to. And okay, there's a short story or there's a novel, novella and there's a novelette, you know, and, and you have to change your plot in order to accommodate each one of those. Right. And in my mind, a lot of present day comic book writers, they don't, they, they are, they're in one form here and they've been doing the same, same thing for so long. They, I don't know that any of them could change the way they structure a plot. Yeah. And I, I say any one of those, you know what I mean? You know, right. Yeah, any yeah. one of the writers that I think are not as, as up to par as, right. as <laughs> better writers. So, yeah. 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 Uh, well, so 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 I'm going to ask you a very targeted question. If you don't want to answer this one, you don't have to because it, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> and and so so the silver line model is we will tell a, a so we're, we're telling mini series with an eye towards the trade slash graphic novel if that's what you want to call it. So so and that's what mo and that's I think what most of the companies are doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Marvel and DC kind of, I, I don't, I, again, I haven't read Marvel DC in years, so, but I, I, I kind of get the idea that that's kind of what they do as well. Um, so, so, so working kind of within that parameter, what would you tell, and, and I know that you, you uh, probably haven't read anything that we've done, 
So, so you you're not commenting specifically on our stories. I but haven't been were, in a comic shop in probably ten years. Well, so but if you were <laughs> I mean, maybe you walked in and out. But, yeah. yeah, but if you were to tell, all right, Roland, here's what you need to make sure that you're doing with mm. Silverline in these stories, knowing that we've got uh, that our model has gotten either three or four issues as a miniseries. What would you what would you suggest that we do from the writer slash story perspective? Well, because because clearly a, a miniseries with an eye towards a, a graphic novel is a, a right. different beast than an extended uh, series. Right. Um, well, yeah. Know your finished product before you start writing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know how to structure the plot, um, and <sighs> make sure, depending on the headliner, the character, the, the main character, the protagonist. Make sure you give him more screen time than the lesser characters. So sometimes I see these lesser characters; they actually take on you know little arcs of their own within some of these some of these books yeah. when, when I don't think they're worthy. And uh, I'm not talking about Silverline. I'm talking about yeah. comic books in the past. Sure, no, 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 story, no. I think. Um, So it's it's it's, it's trade craft. It's it's hard to. Cover it in the space of a, well, and, <laughs> and, and, it's, it. and it's kind but, of a vague question as well. Yeah, well, but you know, it's it's a valid question, and and like I said, I I can't I can't critique any any anybody else's writing. I just I just think that uh, I know what I would do in given a certain in given a certain circumstance. You know? So, in other words, this is not an invitation for anybody to send you their miniseries and have you critique it yet. <laughs> <laughs> My ex-wife was Russian, by the way, so that was that's where I came from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, um, yeah, it's you got you got to know. Like I, I may have said last time I was on here, I see too many writers, or even back when I was in comics, um, back in the eighties and nineties. There were some good writers who yeah. did not could not think visually, mm. and it, no matter how much I, I know, you know, I made the comment about um, yeah, one writer who wanted nine to ten panels on a page, and I heard I heard Curtis say something to the effect, to the effect that well, the writer in him likes that. Yeah, but <laughs> well, most most comic book readers don't. Right. I mean, it, it, unless, unless they're specific. Unless it's George writing, Perez. Well, unless they're specifically writer-driven. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I use Dave Gibbons' as The Watchmen thing as an example. I mean, Dave, he's, David Gibbons is brilliant. I love The Watchmen book when I first saw it. Um, but it's, it's not something I think that a lesser artist could do. Well, let me ask um, you a question here. So so I, I see this on, on the Internet, and I, I mostly stay out of these because most of the times they, they, they trash one way or the other. But, you know, you, you talk about uh, the visual thing. And, and let, for, for what it's worth, I absolutely 100% agree with you on that. Um, he, he, and I'm even talking about, you know, quote, unquote, name writers. Now, um, but there, would, would you agree first that there's a difference between, say, the Marvel method of writing and, and uh, uh, writing a full script? Well, yeah. The, the, well, I don't know if Marvel still does it that way, but the Marvel method of writing gave more um story control to the artist and uh and, is, and is, that how, like, is that what you work most from? artists like that excuse me is that what you work from when you were at marvel yeah yeah well it's a it's more of a treatment that the that the writer gave to the artist and the artists are going like fill in the action blanks or whatever and then right. it goes back to the writer and sometimes you know they would redraw stuff as i said earlier but and uh in order to for whatever reason yeah but um <clears throat> yeah i i always wanted to be part of the creative process so. yes so 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 do i am i hearing you saying that you 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 think that's a good method it's, well it it's <laughs> the method is only as good as the people involved let's put it yeah. that way well so, so like, I, I, like i said if, if you have an if you have a writer who can be a terrific a brilliant writer it can be stephen king but if he can't think visually on the page, to me, it's a not a successful book. Yeah. And it, well, because, it, it, because 
despite what some writers will tell you, this is a visual medium. It is, yeah. And you can't be writing like Melville and expect to sell a comic. <laughs> <laughs> well, so so uh, so I'm a big fan of, of the method, and the reason I'm a big fan of the method is because I, I because of that very reason. I think that no matter how good I think I am visually, I think an artist who is trained visually is going to always be better at the visual elements that I can be. So why would I not just say, Hey, here's what I want to happen on this page. You make it happen. Right. Rather than me trying to say panel one, this happens in this panel, panel two, this happens in this panel. Cause I feel that, that, that that's somewhat limiting to, to an artist in the composition of the page and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I see so many people on the internet trash that method. But well, it's the writer taking a, 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 a it's a writer putting off all the work on the artist, or it's a, it's a writer cheating. And I'm like, I don't think so. That, that that's not the way that that's not my belief in the method. Because again, I've read scripts, full scripts by by quote unquote professional writers, and I see I I read them, and I'm like, well, that's not very visual. Why don't you remove this and just let the artist design the page? And then you can come back and you can add this dialogue later in places that are appropriate for it. Well, I, I also come from the movie world, the movie industry, right? So well, that's one of the things that you learn early on if you're trying to write a screenplay is uh, <clears throat> you don't put everything on the page. Right. What you have, and, and if you try to do that, it won't get read. You know, I, you know you, you, if you have a long paragraph describing what a room looks like, you know, you're, for one, it's going to be turned down immediately as you're, you're, uh, you know, right. you're, you're not a professional, you're not a professional screenwriter then. Right. And, but on the other hand, <clears throat> so, <laughs> um, there are well, plethora, of, there are a lot of stories about around Hollywood, like Penny Marshall, for instance, where, you know, one of her famous, famous movies that she directed, well, the screenwriter came out to the set and was watching the filming and he would go over and he would talk to her and he would talk to the, talk to the, he would actually talk to the actor. And this is what I had in mind. And Penny Marshall said, you can go home now. Yeah. You can do, you, can do, you did your job. You can go home now. Right. And she, she picked him off the set. And so, yeah. yeah, everybody's got a job and depending on how, how good that person is and you know they're quentin tarantino can basically write and direct and do it you know do anything right. he wants. yeah and, and he's good he's at always it. that kind of people yeah yeah <laughs> he's, most of the time he's pretty good at it. Yeah. um but not everybody not everybody can do that i mean you right. look at uh, m night Shyamalan and how you know he he had a couple big hits but his writing suffers over over time because he he couldn't grow far enough from his beginning so yeah i yeah, in here i'm here i'm here i'm critiquing multi-millionaires you know, cool, you know <laughs> cool, I got say, right? <laughs> but, but you know this is my was my way of saying this is why i think that it depends on the person in the seat if it's if the writer can think visually enough let him go to go to town and create all the details in a scene he wants but if if the artist cannot create part of that scenery if he's just doing what's on the page, then let him just do what's on the page. But yeah. he, they have, they both have to be able to fill both those seats if they want to do both jobs. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm a fan. Pete, Pete has never really said anything to me. That's the way we do silver line team up. And he's never really said anything. I think it's just cause he's a nice guy. He's never really said <laughs> anything to me one way or the other. So he's a and, year, brother. And, and the final product looks awesome. So, uh, you know, from, from my perspective, I look at it and I'm like, okay, this is working, right? Except for that I had too many fire engines in the first scene, apparently. Okay. <laughs> Takes two seconds to write it, and I'm drawing it for a day and a half. Uh -huh. Isn't it the way? <laughs> okay. I feel your pain, Pete. Yeah, and then he puts, like, way, way too much detail on something. I do put too much detail, I'm, but I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm, it I'm, for I'm a trying to cut back on that nonsense. <laughs> Well, and and then but I wanted nine rungs on this ladder, not seven. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then there's also the thing that somebody uh, somebody forgot to communicate to Roberta that that was uh, snow and not fire. Oh, I know that. Please okay. snow, Roberta. My snow looks a lot more snow-like in the next issue. So. I know. <laughs> you can't have any issues. 
<laughs> well, if I'd have just gotten the script to begin with. I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's good is in the script, it didn't say snow at all. Uh, it, it said, was a blank page. Just said, do what you like. It said the weather, <laughs> do right? Do what you like. It didn't it say do the weather? Do what you like, make me look good. Is that okay? <laughs> uh, that works uh, for, for the record, I want everyone to know Roberta has the script for issue two already I in do. her hands, and she had it a long time ago. Oops. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, I'm glad I you do it. because I haven't paid any attention to that. So don't, <laughs> when you when you come to color it, it's not going to correspond at all. <laughs> I've done my own thing. <laughs> <laughs> I've decided they're all going to die at the end, and I don't have to. Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> Fine, now we all buy the book. Well, the, the snowstorm comes in really thick in issue three, and you don't see much. <laughs> it's white on white, huh? It's white out. Well, the thing I will say, at least Pete reads the script, so we can't say that can't, can't say the same thing for Tommy. He Tommy doesn't have a clue what's going on. To, yeah, Tommy has yeah, no clue. No Tommy didn't even read, Tommy prints the books, and he doesn't he doesn't read them even after they're printed. <laughs> <laughs> We can talk about him because he's not here. So, uh, well, all right. Well, my clock says nine twenty-eight. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, and the time has flown by. Uh, Jerry, anything you want to? Anything you want to add? That uh, you're like, man, I should have said this. I just want to say everybody should just give up now because it's all. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. one final question for you, Jerry. What yeah. would it take? What would it take? Uh, for someone to come back to to uh, Jerry Bingham and say, "I have a comic book I want you to draw. What would it take?" More money, and, than I, you and I'm not talking about a dollar figure. I mean, I know Short that like, we know that that is there, but yeah, I'm. Are you, you done? Know, what's that? Are you done or? Yeah, I'm pretty much done. Yeah. Right, we have both comics. I just. I, I, right now, I'm I'm enjoying. I go to the occasional convention and see the fans, and that's that's fun. I do sketches and that sort of thing. But actually, over the past ten years or so, I do have these inspirations where I wanted to go and, and I've got like maybe a dozen comics started. The first ten, first five to ten pages drawn, they're laying in drawers because I eventually I just got other stuff to do. Yeah. And then uh, if I pull myself away from it for uh, two, three weeks, you know, it's just hard to pick up again. So yeah. it's like, I, I still, I want to be there in my heart because yeah. this is where I grew up. Right. And, but, it, but it's like, it's like anything. It's like, I wanted nothing more than to be a Marvel artist and mm. I got to do it. And within five years I was jaded and had to leave. <laughs> and, yeah. and then there was, I really didn't want to go back. Yeah. And then my whole, my, I guess my whole uh, artistic career has been like that. Yeah. I, I move forward and then I, I, it's hard for me to go back. It's hard for me yeah. to retrace my steps. So, yeah. you I'm always looking, the, the I'm always looking down within, huh? What's that? You got, to, you got, to, you got to see the beast from within, right? Well, yeah. And it's not even just about, you know, learning to dislike the environment you're in. It's, it's more like once I've moved forward, I, I just I'm, I'm always looking forward and that's just part of who I am I'm yeah. always looking forward and so when I, I went to work at Disney and when I got out of there I never wanted to work at Disney again I went into movies and I was fine until I decided I had enough and so yeah I started the gallery stuff and now here I am and who knows I, I you know and now I'm I, I'm working on other things besides that to yeah. try to see where I can push myself over the next 10 years. Yeah. At my age, 10 years is a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. It gets to be a, a bigger and bigger deal the, the, the more birthdays you have, right? Well, exactly. <laughs> so, so I go back right now, I'm a, you know, I had that mindset that I'm feeling in pretty good health. Yeah. for my age and so i don't have a problem there but in my mind there's a ticking clock yeah and mm -hmm. if i want to get involved in this down the road i can't be going back and doing this former stuff right because i i have a you know i have my well, next goal set up and then there'll be another goal after that if i make it that far so yeah. 
Well, my, yeah, and, and those, those mortality becomes very real. I had an uncle who died recently. My, now my dad's, my dad's the oldest of the brothers. I had an uncle who died and I got to thinking, I said, you know, I'm, I'm only 13 years removed yeah. from the age of my uncle. Yeah. Hmm. Again, my my dad's considerably older than him, but yeah. you know, uh, it's like wow, I, I'm I'm only 13 years from my uncle who just passed away. So my my grand, uh, my, my grand grandpa Bingham lived to be 99 years old. From what they say, of course, of course, he probably stretched the truth a little bit, but he was an <laughs> Irishman after all. But, uh, <laughs> I'm thinking I may have a few years yet. <laughs> now, 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 Pete, that's his ancestor that was an, an Irishman. Pete's an American. I mean, uh, Jerry's an American now. That that makes him okay, right? <laughs> sure. I'm, I like the Irish. Everyone likes the Irish. <laughs> no, no, you like their beer. <laughs> no, 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 I do like Guinness. Um, yeah. <laughs> by, by the way, we were royalty, okay? The Binghamists. <laughs> yeah. yeah, heard, heard of Lord Lucan? I know Lord Lucan. What's that? I know of Lord Lucan. You know, Lord, most people do because one guy was, he, he had to run away, disappear because he was a killer or something. Wasn't That's it? right. That's why I know Lord Lucan. But I was told I'm not related to that guy. <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> I'm not related to that Lord Lucan. <laughs> yes, Actually, I don't know. I don't know. I'm a good guy, the good one. <laughs> I don't know if you know Ireland, Pete. There's actually a place in Ireland called Binghamstown. And that nice. was my that was my great great grandfather's. It's up you know where the mullet is? It's up on the the western shore up near Northern Ireland. There's a right. place that's that's depressed and because <laughs> the weather is rotten all year and it was called the mullet. And there was actually the Bingham's Castle there at one point. Um, the black and tans burned it down at the turn of the century, the turn of the last century. Yeah. <clears throat> that was grand that was great great granddad. He was the evil landlord. <laughs> <laughs> Great, great, great. You can go back and reclaim it. What's that? You can go back and reclaim it. Yeah, I could. Yeah, how much trouble no, would that be? I don't, it would probably burn me out again. Just stand in the middle of the street, look around, go, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> That's right. I'll right. have this back. I'm told I could get dual citizenship, but uh, that would take a lot of work. That would, uh, that would certainly get you back in the news, wouldn't it? Yeah. All right. American invades Ireland. Yeah, <laughs> an American, so, so American, one American, uh -huh. one American, and, and, and of course the, the British will be going, yeah, go, 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 go. go. We've been doing that for hundreds of years, too. Right. Yeah. Where are you in England? Oh, London. Well, oh, okay. I was stationed in uh, Lake and Heath, Milton Hall. Oh, um, in Suff I Suffolk County. Convention up at Milton Hall last end of last year. Suffolk County. I um I went in there and I didn't realise it's an American airbase. I just thought it was just another airbase. We got we got them all over. Yeah. Uh, well, and the main one was like in US dollars. Was, what's that? They had a Starbucks in US dollars. I was like, this is. I actually had them. You had US dollars in your pocket, right? So you just pulled it out. Well, people were like, do you want me to pay in dollars or pounds? I said, pounds is best for money. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't live on this base. Right. <laughs> uh, all right, y'all. We got to call it a night. Uh, right. Haley, where can people find you online? Um, I'm on Instagram as Haley Martin Art. Um, and then I have my webcomic Heroic Shenanigans, um, which is at heroicshenanigans.com. It's also on Webtoon. If you Google that name, spell it wrong. You'll probably still find it. <laughs> uh, Pete, what about you? Where can, uh, where can folks find you online? Uh, just type in my name, Peter Clinton, and add art at the end of it. Um, I'm everywhere except for OnlyFans. <laughs> and we've been trying so. to talk you into there. <laughs> well, I can make well, money on it. I, I that, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about uh, starting OnlyFans and, you know, uh, put up my feet. Hey, there are special websites for that. <laughs> That's a thing, thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> Getting the early fans of that. Roberta, it's great to see you again on, uh, on Sunday Thank night. You. Yeah, Work. nice to be here. Working. Uh, you. So you, do... you can find me on, under my name, uh, Roby Conroy, on, on Instagram and Facebook. Anytime. Excellent. And Jerry, can anyone find you online? <laughs> well, it takes a team of huskies. 
Uh, well, I, um, yeah, jerrybingham.com. That's where you'll see the art I'm doing now for the most part. And uh, actually, yeah, there's a. Uh, I'm actually in an art show as of last weekend. It's uh, I still have a painting there that needs to sell. So you're a, you're in a gallery, sell. aren't you? Was that? You know, aren't you? Aren't you, don't you have a a, a, sh a piece in a gallery now, right? You know, well, I have a piece in a gallery show. I'm not. Okay. I'm not part of the gallery. Okay. So far, this stuff. So far at the moment. What's that? Yeah, yeah, I'm Pete does jump too. on Jerry's bandwagon. I'm in a gallery at the moment as well. Although my 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 art is my comic book art, bizarrely. Yeah. It's it's the only black and white pieces in there. <laughs> <laughs> they won't they won't let me put my comic book art in the in the Western Art Gallery, sadly. But yeah, that, that yeah. doesn't have enough horses and and uh, shotguns in it, right? Yeah. But uh, I will. Be, I'm I'm scheduled to be at Heroes Con this year. I think that's in June. Oh, so, very cool. Yeah. So and I'll be I'll be in a few more. By the end of the year, probably. Ah, that sounds good. Uh, you can find me on all the uh, social medias, uh, Roland Man. Sometimes it's Man Roland, uh, and also look for Silverline. Uh, Jerry, hang out uh, after the show. We'll chat a little bit. Uh, and until next time, remember to oh, make mine Silverline. Silver line. Line. Good night, everybody. I'm April Hunter. Make mine Silverline. All right. <laughs>